Welcome to the Workforce Connection. My name is Rob Mellion, I am the host, and the Workforce Connection is a co-production of Bristol Community College and the Fall River Area Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And the purpose of this program is for us to be talking about issues and topics that are very important to those who are seeking a position, those who have employment, and employers all together. Uh, it is a great combination of topics that we're going to be covering here. And this topic for today is one that I'm really excited about. It is going to be about the Workforce Education Institute. And to help us talk about what the Institute is, what it does, and how it impacts you, we have the Vice President of the Workforce Institute, which is Joe Menard, and we also have the Associate Vice President for the Workforce Institute, who is Terry Romanovich. And I want to thank both of you for taking time out of your very busy schedules to be able to talk about this institute and also talk about how Bristol Community College is impacting the lives of people all through Bristol County and helping them to connect with employment secure the employment that they currently have and maybe go into something that they never thought was possible because of what you're producing. So thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you for having us. So maybe we should go into uh, uh, talking about your roles at Bristol, Com uh, Bristol Community College first. You know, Joan, what is it that uh, you do as the senior president, uh, senior vice president? We can't give you Jack's job yet. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> what, do, what do you do as the senior well, or the vice president for workforce development at Bristol Community College? Well, it's, it's really my job to um, oversee all of the workforce development activities. And, uh, and that really includes a couple of other things with it, adults, basic ed, which really folds into workforce development, and English as a second language. That also folds right in. Uh, many of our um, students and the people in our area uh, really feel like they need those skills to perform better in terms of workforce development. So that's what I do. Plus, I do um, external affairs. And I, I, I think external affairs also fits neatly into that package because it's my job to go out and talk to people in the communities that we represent, which is Attleboro, Taunton, Fall River, and New Bedford. Our main campus is Fall River. We have a large campus in New Bedford and, um, and a very active campus in Attleboro. And, and in Taunton, we're coming along. We're, we're starting some new new classes there. Yeah, and, I understand uh, that Taunton would like us to have a they would like very active to. campus yes. there we, as well. And we will. And uh, so that's part of my job, going out and telling people. And it, it's amazing when I do go out that people say, I didn't know that. I didn't know that you could do that. So that's, that's my job. And what about you, Terry? I think um, what my role is to sort of take the leadership in really launching and growing the Workforce Education Institute, which was conceived by the president of the college and the board of trustees to really put a one-stop approach to how employers connect with us and as you said job seekers as well and to really have a blended model where students can come and see that they can start anywhere as Joan mentioned from adult basic ed and connect the dots all the way through an associate degree and for those who want to transfer a transfer so my job is to work with people like you to get this message out so that as employers want to call us we really have a one-stop we've actually even created a one-stop number so if anybody wants to call us it's actually the college's number and just extension info so perfect I was gonna say to let's, learn. yeah let's and let's give that information out uh, maybe throughout the show sure. as well so that people get it and of course it'll be available on the Chamber of Commerce website and it'll be available on the Bristol Community College website too great how about we talk about the changing role of community colleges, particularly Bristol Community College, over the last five years, I've seen an evolution. We were talking about this prior to the show, mm -hmm. the evolution uh, that has undergone here in uh, the Bristol County area here. I, five years ago, the infrastructure that you have today just didn't exist. Correct. So how has the college changed, uh, evolved, per se, uh, into this role with workforce development? 
Well, I think that, um, it, just as you said, Rob, I think that when I looked at Com Bristol Community College five years ago or ten years ago, I thought of a place where you went to get an associate degree uh, or you took a class if you wanted to learn how to use computers or something like that. I never really thought about it in terms of connecting with the Career Center for unemployed people or going to the employers and saying, can we upgrade the skills of your employees? I never really thought about it like that. <clears throat> That's our new role. That's that's what we're um, the face of Bristol Community College Workforce Institute. And I guess that rolls into the purpose of the institute. Mm -hmm. So, what got Bristol Col uh, Gr Bristol Community College to establish this institute? What was the what was the idea behind it? I think what we're seeing is that nationally there's a movement to really understand how we educate the current workforce and how we make sure that we're prepared for the future workforce. A lot of the research is coming out now that by the year 2020, 70% uh, of people in Massachusetts are going to need some skill be be beyond high school. How do we, working with employers, figure out how to do that so that so that when new businesses are coming into this industry, we have the trained workforce? So I think a lot of where all of this is coming from is the demand for us to stay current in a global economy. And the only way we can do that is to make sure that we're working together with employers to educate not only their current workshop workforce, but what's coming down the pipeline. And so when we start looking at the data and how much of that evolves around community colleges, we have to be in the forefront. Like Joan said, even though we were doing workforce and have been doing workforce since the community college was incepted, it was always seen as, as not really that public. And so now we're really trying to get out there in a big way and let people know, you know what, what we're doing. You know what my observation is, uh, having <coughs> worked with Bristol Community College for the past five years, is that there has been a strategic shift mm -hmm. at Bristol Community College where it seems that workforce and educating the workforce has become not a issue that was on the side but has actually exactly. been incorporated Embedded. into almost everything that is done Correct. at Bristol Community College. Right. And I think that's part of what we're doing right now is really physically connecting the dots so that as we're building training programs on the workforce side, they're connecting directly to the academic side of the house, learning how to give credit where credit is due and credentialing some of that, and really building a seamless bridge for people. But one of the things that the community college is trying to do is communicating that better to everybody. Because even if we're doing it and no one knows we're doing it, as Joan said, she didn't realize you may not of how do we get that message out so this whole call info at Bristol Community yeah. College is, is to build that one stop so people who, who really do need this information have access to it and have access to it quickly. So then this goes to the logical next question is who are your, stake, uh, your stakeholders? Mm -hmm. Who is it that you're reaching out to? Well, in addition to employers, we're, you know, uh, what we, we know we have to do is bring this to the high schools in the area so that they understand. And we have a very strong connection with the vocational schools, all of the vocational schools, working closely with them, but also the academic schools because for a lot of the students that are in the Jiffy High School and all of the suburban schools, um, they're not quite sure where they're going or what they want to do, so we want them to understand that we're trying to be there for them to train them for the future. Can we talk about that relationship sure. with the vocational schools and also with the high schools for that matter? And I say high schools, plural, mm -hmm. because my again, my observation is that Princeton Community College is everywhere. Yes. Uh, it's really impressive. Uh, I don't know a school in the area that doesn't have some connection with you guys. Right. And we would like to have even a deeper connection because I think there, uh, we have we have done um, uh, different kinds of, of, of classes at, at the different high schools, especially I'll talk about the suburban high schools and in particular. But I don't think that the workforce development piece of it and has ever been really um, uh, explained to the students. So that yes, there is a path. There is a path here that leads you to either a job or uh, a certificate and or an associate degree if you wish. Um, so I think we are doing more and more of that. Um, so why do you both feel that 
the community at large is going to truly benefit from the establishment of this Workforce Education Institute. Well, I think what we're finding is employers are struggling with their workforce because their work is changing dramatically and so this is a win-win for everybody and it's a partnership that is really going to not only sustain businesses that are already here but it's going to present a workforce that's going to be able to lure new industry to this area so if we all want our community to be thriving which we all do and we want all of our children to have good jobs the only way we're going to do that with the changing environment with the global economy and with uh, manufacturing becoming a lot more advanced and a lot more technologically savvy, then we need to be partnering and we need to be working together. I mean, we hear from employers all the time that they need to become more lean to be competitive. They need to become more educated within for customer service because it's all depending on that customer coming back. And so a lot of what we're doing together is helping everyone to understand that. And like Joan said, we're starting also with the high schools because a lot of a lot of the people in high school today don't even understand the career options that are out there. So we're trying to help get some courses in there that are introducing them, say, to clean energy as an example. And so there's a lot more connections for all of us to do this together so that we can have jobs for our, for our children and our grandchildren. And I think that maybe it's a good time for us uh, with the last remaining moments in this segment of the show to talk about what exactly the Institute is. So what exactly is it that has been put together here? So there are several components. One is a one-stop so that we have this number, and again, it's the Bristol Community College phone number, 508-678-2811, extension info, which is 4636. We actually have a direct dial, which is 774. 357 info 4636 and so when someone calls that whether it's an employer saying I have a need for my workforce training as we talked about lean um, it might be customer service there's a one stop for that so that there's a better connection and that we don't lose the employer and their interest because they don't know exactly where to go. So that's number one. The other is making these bridges more clear between the workforce training side of the house and the and the academic credit side of the house so these pathways become very seamless and become embedded. And the other is to really work with employers to say there are resources out there that we want them to have access to because a lot of times everyone's saying I'd love to have my workforce trained but I have no money for that well we work with them to be able to access those funds so I think those are the three key components that make this and you notice the language workforce education institute that whole blending and the marriage of employers and education I think that sums it up that's a very good elevator speech oh great like thank you chart. I'm gonna very practice good. it <laughs> so when we come back, we're going to take a break, but okay. when we come back, I'd like to actually talk about some of the elements with you of what the Institute is and also talk about a little bit of how it uh, partners with the new uh, uh, center that was created on Duval Street. Okay. But right now, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back after this important message. I moved up here with, with the family. Uh, my, my wife got a real good job right off and, and I have a, a real extensive background in drafting from Florida and I, I assumed that I'd be able to move up here and with all of my experience that I'd be able to get in with a company up here right away and that there'd be no, no problems. Um, once I got here in December and come April I still didn't have a job. I wasn't able to get any callbacks from, from any employers and I kind of thought it was because I didn't have a degree. I didn't have any kind of an educational background. Just that right there tells you that employers are, are looking at uh, the degree, they, they want people with an education. My name is David Henry, I'm the Engineering Science Transfer, uh, class of 2013. That's what got me here to BCC. I, I just got right in and I found out what a great uh, engineering program is here at BCC. Because of the circuits class that I took and because of a MATLAB programming class that I took, um, I'm thinking I would like to try to get into controls, aircraft controls. So it was always kind of a dream of mine. You know, I'd like to be an astronaut. I don't know that I can be an astronaut with my family, but um, I can be. I can support astronauts. Congratulations, you made it! And I'll be going to Florida Institute of Technology for their aerospace engineering bachelor's program. The company that I'm working at, um, again, I think it was the degree that that finally did it. They had a 
a real long list of requirements. And I, I, I really believe that, that the degree and the certificate that I earned uh, played into their decision to, to hire me over some other. I would tell anybody that's in a, in a situation where they can't get a job to, to definitely look into retraining, uh, to going out and furthering their education. Hey, welcome back to the Workforce Connection. My name is Rob Million, I'm your host, and we have great guests today. We have Joe Menard, who is the Vice President for Workforce Development at Bristol Com Community College, and we also have Teresa Romanovich, who is the Associate Vice President for Workforce Development at Bristol Community College. And we're talking about the Workforce Education Institute, and I think it was a great first segment, and right at the end we were talking about, we're kind of uh, creating that elevator speech per se about what the Institute is and I think it's interesting we have the uh, Workforce Development Center or the Workforce Center on Duval Street how does that center fit into the Institute and how is the Institute greater than the Workforce Center on Duval Street? So the Workforce Center on Duval Street is where all the activity takes place for the training side of the college. So if someone were to come and take a CNA program as an example, they would go down and physically be on Duval Street. So that's sort of the hub for the training component of it. Where this blends in in terms of the institute is bringing that workforce um, into the educational piece of inside of the house where we're really bridging all of the training that goes on. We'll use CNA as an example. Someone's taking the CNA but they eventually want to secure an associate degree. How does that bridge happen? So the institute is bringing together an internal and external leadership team that's actually helping to have all those things happen. Helping to not only show the individual how to get from point A to point B, but also showing them how the credits follow all of that and building that system. So the hub it for workforce training is our, our Duval Street location. And the bigger picture, as you explained, is really bridging that into the campus and having workforce education be on everyone's mind as we move forward and having everyone be a part of how that is crafted. And that's, that's exactly the reason why I was asking Terrence because uh, Bristol Community College is very large. Yes. I mean you're in Taunton, you're in Attleboro, you're in uh, New Bedford and Fall River and multiple sites in, in many of the cities throughout the entire yes. South Coast region, Southeastern region, really. And I guess how, how will these institute work for Attleboro and for Taunton mm -hmm. and for New Bedford? John? Well, uh, what we're doing now is, if obviously, if we're conducting classes at, on Duval Street, we're asking people to come to some of those classes. But we do a lot of on-site training, and we do, and, and we are. That's, in, that's in, what I was wondering. Yeah, yes. we do a lot of on-site training. A lot of the employers say we we would really like to uh, upgrade the skills of our employees, but we don't have, we can't give them time off, and we need them at, here at, on site. So we actually do. From the beginning to the end, we, we go in, we evaluate what their needs are, we sit with them, we write the grants for them, uh, we hopefully can get them resources to pay for those grants. If they're part of the workforce training uh, fund, then they, we can do that. Um, and then we, we hire the instructors and we do it on site, or we do it in a site that's close to where they are. Uh, we're right now embarking, and, and Terry can talk a little bit more about a huge project in New Bedford. Uh, we just received three very large grants to do uh, a, a wind energy project. And uh, so that will be on site in New Bedford. And so that the employee, employees will not have to come here to Fall River to be trained. I actually think that would be a great idea because what you're referring to, Joan, is uh, I think the model of how the Institute works, per exactly. se. And, uh, we're, we're talking about uh, Bristol Community College's connection with the city of New Bedford right. partnering together with their economic development division as well, providing the educational resources to help build their new energy infrastructure that they're working on over there. Exactly. Correct. 
Yes, so exactly. I laid it out for you. Take Thank it from you there. very much, <laughs> Rob. Um, I think it's a perfect, as you said, a perfect example of what the power of the new Workforce Education Institute can do. And as you know, under the leadership of Mayor Mitchell in New Bedford, they have been working over the last several years to put in place the infrastructure both systemically within the city, but also the workforce infra infrastructure to be cutting edge and to be the leader in building an offshore wind industry. When we started looking at that, we all sat down and said, okay, but what does that mean? What does that mean to educate that workforce? So we all had to sit down with employers. We actually even took a trip to Europe to sort of look at Terry, their I'm model. I'm going to ask to pause for a second. Sure. Why was it important for Bristol Community College and for uh, the city of New Bedford to want to educate workers for this project? Great question, and I think what we discovered was employers won't come unless they're guaranteed by the mayor, by the Economic Development Council, that there will be a trained workforce for them when they get here. And that's the key. If we're trying to lure new industry to this area, they're going to come and they're going to love being by the water and they're going to love that there's a good education system, but they really want to come to make sure that there's a workforce that they can tap into because they don't want... otherwise they're going to have to bring it in. Exactly, and as we all know, that's costly. So everyone has to put their heads together, including the employers, to sit down and say, what are the skill sets? How can we work together to do that? Where does the training end start? How are we building the training into the educational components? So so my peer on the academic side, Anthony Ucci, has been instrumental in helping us to build that pathway. So now we have all of this training going on. We're working with the unions on a construction training because, as you know, the first piece to hit New Bedford right now is the terminal. And so we're working to build that pre-apprentice, working with the unions for the apprentice. But then we're trying to build a credential for that so that these people get on a pathway into an offshore wind certificate program. So it's exactly what we're doing um, through the Institute that sort of brings all the right people to the table. It's, it's really remarkable. It's very, very exciting and it's wonderful to see I mean, the we're energy. All being, we're all, <coughs> we, we deal in this stuff every right. day, but I, and I don't think that the public recognizes how cutting edge this really is. Yes. I, I, we, Terry, you and I were talking about it a couple of days ago that there are very few regions throughout the country right now that are doing what Bristol Community College is doing right. for, for workforce education. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I see it in Europe, for sure, and I see it in pockets throughout the United States, and this being Massachusetts, a state that is ahead of everybody else, I don't see anybody doing what Bristol Community College is doing right now. I see a lot of people taking notes. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Including well, the governor. Well, well that, yes. That was, was interesting yes. because what we have done, and I think, is because we've worked so hard and been, you know, we have to give credit to our employer-based um, uh, partnership. partnership because they have responded immediately to when we say we can do this for you, they responded immediately. The, the, the governor, the U.S. senators, the congressmen, the secretaries of environmental affairs, the secretaries of, of economic development, they've all been here and it's, it's pretty interesting what they do. Not only do they listen to us, but they go in and talk to the people that are actually in the programs. They, and they talk to the employers that are actually participating mm -hmm. in, with us in, in this endeavor. And, and I've been on some yes, of those tours yes. and they are astounded at what they're seeing. Yes. Because this is really, I think everybody had in their mind what they would like it to be. And it seems to me, just again, my observation in all this, I sound like a cheerleader here, but and we I think it's, but it's, but it, it's just remarkable what's being done. It's yes. better than what I think anybody anticipated. Well, what the governor said, which I thought was a great one word, he said it's groundbreaking. And I just yeah. think that's a nice way to look at it because we really are building something and we are, really are at the groundbreaking stage of it like we are even in New Bedford physically with the groundbreaking of it. But it's a nice way to show that, you know, we're doing it together, but we're breaking new ground, but we're building a new thing, but we're doing it all together. And I think that's how Earlier it Earlier in the program, we talked about stakeholders. Uh, who are the companies that you want to be partnering with? You know, is it the big companies that are, uh, 
a thousand employees, 500 employees, or is there any room for an employer of 50 employees or or 30 employees? Everyone, everyone. We can we can do all of that, and we have uh, we've worked with at the industrial park here in Fall River with smaller employers and put together uh, programs for five or six of their employees. Uh, and written a grant so that those five or six would be trained in a particular area. Uh, we're equipped to work with small, small, small companies and any kind of a company. It doesn't necessarily have to be manufacturing. It can be manufacturing. It can be uh, financial services. We worked with several banks, two mm -hmm. banks right Healthcare. now, or three banks right now. Um, any kind of a company who feels a need, we're there to, in any size. And what about the fields? You know, I know, for example, uh, when you worked with Bay Coast Bank, that uh, it was in customer service. Mm -hmm. uh, it's what are the topic areas that you're working with companies for? I mean, I know lean, and uh, in the case of, like I said, Bay Coast, it was right. uh, customer service. But what? What is it that you can do as far as workforce What's education? What's so interesting about workforce is, um, like Joan said, we can do everything. Uh, it's, it's about saying, what are you missing as an employer? And what we're finding is employers are doing things like trying to find out how do they keep up with the new insurance codes. Well, all of a sudden now everyone needs to be trained because what what were 10 codes and now 10,000 codes and doctors have right. to understand it. And well, I, that's interesting yeah. that you mentioned that because we are now starting um, with a healthcare collaborative and, and looking at mm -hmm. and PrimaCare and all all of uh, the local places. And your partnership with South Coast. Yes, yeah. and with South Correct. Coast. And we're, we're, we're we're seeing that they are looking at their employees and saying, you know, we're probably not going to hire a whole lot of new employees, but we certainly do have to upgrade the skills of the employees that are there. And now that healthcare is becoming totally computerized and everybody has to have uh, their medical records, this is a, a going to be a big, big field for us. And absolutely. And speaking about, we only have about another minute here uh, in the show, but on the research side, what are you doing as far as research goes? So a lot of what we're trying to understand is what are, what are the national labor market trends? What are the local labor market trends? Where do we see emerging industries coming in? And we need to understand that. And what are, what are the research that we're collaboratively doing with employers to make sure that they stay competitive. So we're doing a lot of needs ana analysis. We're doing it industry-wide as opposed to industry sector-wide, I should say. So not just South Coast, but what is the whole healthcare industry going to look like five years from now? So we're trying to gather the data because we have to begin now if we're going to implement something and be successful five years from now and have the degrees in place. So we're doing a lot of the research on what are those trends, where, where are the movements happening, where do we see the potential offshore wind, as we talked about earlier, is a perfect example of that brand new, how do we get that, how do we figure it out. So together we're trying to provide employers with the labor market and information that they need even about their own uh, you know, industry. It's, so. it's, it's like, like you said, it's groundbreaking. And speaking of, we're out of time. Uh, it's been a I think a very interesting show. Terry, one more time, how do people get in touch? So it's very easy, just call the college itself, 508-678-2811, extension info, which is 4363, 4636, sorry. Or you can dial direct, 774-357-4636. Great. I want to thank both of you, thank you, Joan and Terry, for taking time again to be on the Workforce Connection. I think it's an excellent Our show, pleasure. and I think we're going to hear a lot more in the future about the Workforce Education Institute. Thank you, Rob. And thanks for watching the Workforce Connection.